So I wanted to get started asking about the development of the film, um, particularly with the script and what really influenced you to write the story and how did the film come about? Um, well, the film is a kind of a sequel, kind of a philosophical sequel to a film I made called Generation P by the same author, Victor Pelevin, who is a, a major contemporary Russian writer, um, um and uh it was um really i almost had no choice because he put a man manuscript of of the novel on, on uh, in front of me when i was finishing generation p and said this is the, this is the sequel you know this is where you'll meet goddess ishtar and you'll know what's really who really rules the world who really rules the world i mean this is what because that's one of the things in generation p that was the big question: Who is in charge of all this stuff? Who is who commands the, you know the world? And uh, it ended with that big question mark. And then this story, Empire V, really answers that question completely and fully. <laughs> We're all ruled by a bunch of vampires. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's how. And then I, I basically, I started. I initially wanted to make this film in English, and uh, we, I went through. A couple of years of development on that we had an english script but i think it was um in fact i even met with sharon stone who's agreed to play uh goddess ishtar we started casting but um financing was really hard to get for this film because it's it is an expensive movie you, you know it's very it's very visually very ambitious and um um that was uh it was difficult to find financing and in in a way it, it's interesting because then i went to russia and started making, making it in russia um and oddly enough you know there's a lot more room to experiment in in russia in film you know it's not things are not as commercialized and as set uh, as they are in um, hollywood which is you know um so yeah and so then you know i kept rewriting the script until I was in post-production because it's not a it's not an easy story it's not a typical story you know yeah so that's kind of the the way it happened yeah and also um going on from writing the script and to directing on set and what was that experience like for you to continue telling the story as the director as well oh you know it's it's um <laughs> directed you know i i think I, I to me to me i think uh, screenwriting is the most difficult part of filmmaking to be perfectly honest with you i think you know once once that um and 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 it's just a continuing it, it's a continuous process uh even on the set even when you're working with actors and stuff like that so uh it's it's not a it's it's an unusual postmodernist story that deals with uh, a lot of uh, conceptual issues about the world we live in and so forth. And yet there is the the story of this kid who becomes a vampire, and uh, you know this this postmodernist love story that he's involved in, and all these other characters. So yeah, I think I think it was the best part of making this film was working with actors for me was was bringing those characters to life you know that was the most interesting and uh challenging part of it and then there was a huge part of course the cg part of this film is also i mean the post-production was enormous on this film we had about 12 different cg studios uh from all over the world actually working on on um the uh, cg uh, there was some very experimental stuff in there as well, like fractal animation, which uh, hasn't been done much, you know. So this this French studio, Boof, which is, um, they won an Oscar for uh, Blade Runner and great, great studio. Uh, um, they really got into um, uh, experimenting with some fractal animation with me. And really uh, helped create the you know visually some amazing 
things. Yes. <laughs> Did I answer your question? I don't, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, also speaking about the visuals, um, also I wanted to ask about um, besides doing the post-production and editing, um, also how much visual um, production was done on set, like practical effects. And was that something that you were also interested in doing while you were filming on set? No, you know, obviously there was, uh, um, we built, first of all, there was a lot of locations, real locations in the film. I really wanted to show Moscow in a, in a completely new way, you know, because I don't think the world had seen this this new Moscow, which has um, evolved in the past, whatever, 10 years. Uh, it, it, the city has really changed and... Uh, um the the sort of the the um empire you know this is this capital of empire at least you know that's that's where i was going um and so yeah that there was a lot of uh locations and we of course built a whole bunch of sets and the, the biggest challenge was the set of the ball the chaldean ball because that was a huge set that was a huge set that was um uh it, it, was, it was scary it was scary to, to even like get into it because it had to be enormous and it was this big and i looked at it, lots of different palaces and all this stuff but this was supposed to be an underground castle vampire castle and uh so i kind of went with um this this architectural style called brutalism which is um uh, there's a lot of it in Russia and well, it's actually quite in right now in Japan and so forth. So I, I combined it with the Babylonian because there's this whole, obviously Babylonian uh, um, uh, theme, visual theme in, in the, in the story, of course, and goddess Ishtar and all that stuff. So, so we, we had to create this, uh, uh, this uh, blend of, um, uh, modernism and and ancient ancient um details like babylonian details so yeah we built that set and then uh it was supposed to be lit with gas uh uh with gas gas um torches uh because there's this theme of of uh russian oil and gas that i wanted to bring into that set you know <laughs> So, so the columns are actually these gas, enormous ga gas prom, you know, uh, pipes, you know, whatever. Um, so, yeah. And all, of course, the flames were added in post-production. That wasn't real gas that you see in the film, in, on the screen, not real flame. That, that's all. So, yeah, that we, we built quite a few sets. And, uh, of course, then the, also the, um, the stunts, of course, there was quite a few stunts in the film uh, that were practical, of course, yeah. And also speaking about the stunt work, um, I also wanted to ask about working with the cast, um, particularly on the stunts and action sequences and what that experience was like and really collaborating with them in that sense as well. I'm sorry. One more time. This you want to yeah. talk? You want me to talk about the stunts? Oh um, yeah, working with the actors on the stunts for the film. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I had to put them in training. I mean, they actually like the lead. The lead actor um, had to for a month. He had to train with stuntmen in all the jumps and fights and all that stuff. And of course, Loki, who is the old guy who teaches um rama the the art of uh, uh combat and love <laughs> which are mm -hmm. united into one course uh well he, yeah he you know he was he was quite prepared for that because he would he could uh, he was um able to do martial arts to begin with but uh so yeah they trained and quite a bit you know and uh had a stunt coordinator who who was quite brilliant Russian uh, local coordinator. So yeah, we invented all these things as we went on, you know, while training. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And also in terms of um, the costumes and makeup, um, that was also something that I enjoyed while watching the film. I wanted to ask about that and how you really created the look for the characters as well. Yeah, thank you. That's that's important. Yeah. Well, you know, the uh, the, the biggest challenge was, of course, the ball. The, you know, the Chaldean ball where they're all in, in these masks and these wild costumes. And so I had this uh, theater costume designer. Uh, she was quite brilliant. Um, uh, so she, you know, she, so she specifically dealt with that part of it. And um, that was quite a, yes, that was a, a big deal. I mean, we, we had to, you know, that, essentially well you you saw you saw what they look like you know and, and the masks you know actually was was uh, you know we created the you know worked quite a long time creating those masks and uh trying to figure out what they should look like and all that stuff and then yeah of course we, you know the the main character had to go through these um wardrobe changes because here's the simple uh moscow guy who you know works as a as a truck loader and then suddenly he's immersed into this world of glamour and you know initially he's just completely fooled by it and he you know he starts wearing these crazy outfits and red suits and all this until until he's told by ty by uh hera you know hey vampires dress in black you know <laughs> stop this <laughs> Yeah. And um, so, yeah, there was quite a, that was one of the storylines. Costumes is definitely one of the storylines in the film. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, um, in terms of the visuals as well and working with your cinematographer and how did you collaborate together to really decide how you wanted to visually shoot the film um, in terms of filmmaking as well? Yeah, that's that's an important question because you know he, of course, you know uh, Alexei Rodionov is 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 I think one of the greatest cinematographers alive right now. I mean, he's shot uh, *Come and See*, which is considered one of the greatest war films ever made, and uh, he's done uh, some. Uh, he did a beautiful film called *Orlando* in England, and uh, so we, I've worked with him on *Generation P*, and and. Um, you know he's he has a very interesting approach because I'm also a cameraman. I shot a lot of stuff myself, and uh, he usually you know his so we we kind of understand each other real quick in terms of light and all that stuff. And but his main question where we set up a shot was not what it's going to look like, not but what is the shot about? What is it about? What what are we trying to tell the viewer with this shot? And that's like a, you know, that always really helped me because this this was the question for my DP. You know, this is like, what is the shot about? You know, not not should we light it this way or that way? I mean, of course, that goes without saying. You know, that that's just like riding a bicycle, but to really make sense of why the camera is moving and and. Uh, that's the question you know <laughs> it's like these are the kind of issues that we would uh yeah but he's he's absolutely wonderful and he he works very rarely now you know he's older but uh i mean he's he he can run around the set like a young guy you know he's like in his 70s but he's in, in amazing health and he turns down a lot of, he basically turns down all, all the Russian projects, right? Lately, you know, he just doesn't want to do it. And uh, so I'm very honored to have worked with him. I'm very honored to have worked with him, yeah. And now with the film premiering at Fantasia, what's that experience been like for you as well to be able to share the movie with the audiences at the festival and being able to premiere there as well? I can't wait. <laughs> I know what it's gonna happen uh what the day after tomorrow yeah. yeah so yeah i can't wait It it's you know this, this film had never had a premiere so this is the premiere it, it was supposed to be in moscow and uh we had we had we had some uh clandestine screenings for the crew 
so it was kind of like mini premieres without too much uh you know but um we never had a public public screening this will be it this will be it so i really look forward to it yeah mm -hmm. okay i think that was me lead but thank you again for taking the time to speak with me i appreciate it mm -hmm. thank you very much karen you're welcome appreciate thanks again take care